At the moment, if a business employs a safety advisor, is there any guarantee that that safety advisor is using similar software where they can track the information that they've given to businesses? For example, we work with WorkHub, which is a very comprehensive piece of software which can do many things. But is this a common thing with safety advisors now, if, if a business employs a safety advisor? Well, there's lots of different types of software. So the safety advisor or officer, um, you know, there's two terms, can advise or recommend or put a business plan forward to the company to adopt a particular tool that they think can help facilitate safety. But as you know, Safety Hut's previous entity, Bravo Zulu, just used Outlook, Calendar and Dropbox. So depending on the company, a small, if they've got a safety advisor, they're the ones that do the research and medium to large business should already have the tools that they're using. They're just looking for something where they're going to house it. So they should have their policies and procedures that might be a purchase from a particular company. I don't think there's many safety advisors that sit down and physically write out everything now, unless they were using chat GPT or whatever to be able to develop things. But that still needs a human eye over it. Whether it's been bought, you'll need to change the logo. And down in that footer, you know, you've got your document control. So that needs, if you're checking your documents annually, you've either got to physically go through each one of those documents and put your next uh, review date in, or there are scripts that will go through a whole bunch of Word documents and change things. I believe your HR consultants that uh, we liaise with have something like that, or a software. Now, WorkHub definitely does that document control automatically. Other software do it in different ways. You know, some only take PDF. I can imagine it would be very bad if something happened and they go to their safety advisor, uh, we need evidence that we consulted with you for this. But they don't have that. That could be a difficult situation. Well, that, it, it, exactly. And, and if I say it's being reviewed, how are we doing it? Am I physically looking at a Word document? Now, in WorkHub, for instance, we move everything over to text, especially the policies and procedures. So it may start off as PDF, whatever the client's got, and we'll eventually move everything. So that means if we change a word, it will force a document change. So for so point 1.1 to 1.2, good evidence for traceability. But look, all safety people get in it for the right reasons. It's actually quite an honourable job to have. You know, going back to when I was young and in the workforce, it didn't exist. And, and then it got bigger and it became a little bit ridiculous where if you didn't have any injuries, this is probably more in the mining industry way back when, you could get a really cool jacket or a really cool esky. And people weren't reporting injuries because uh, yeah, oh, they I see. Were, they you, you put out the front, zero injuries, and everybody goes off happily with their, <laughs> uh, their thing. So, you know, lucky that to change because mining is, has its own inherent risk, you know, reason to completely separate the legislative requirements. Very risky, you know, wouldn't so. it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, coal, underground, have uh, been involved in open cut and uh, a little bit of underground. Big things versus human, you can pretty well say in all environments, the big thing wins or the wrong atmosphere or wherever, whether it's, uh, you can get in a tank that you think's cleaned out but it hasn't been cleaned out properly, you know, you get overcome or you've got the little engine running next to you and the exhaust is coming in the tank and then you end up with a big problem. Thank you for watching. This short video is part of a longer podcast that can be found on the Safety Art YouTube channel as well as Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you found this information helpful, then please like, share and subscribe to see more videos like this one. Also, if you have any Australian and New Zealand workplace and fire safety related questions that you'd like Bruce to answer on the podcast, then feel free to leave a comment below and we'll answer it in the next week's podcast. For more in-depth information and inquiries, you can also schedule a free call with Bruce directly by visiting safetyhut.com.au.